Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Monday Night iBug Buzz. Today is September 23, 2024, and this is buzz call number 652. The iBug Buzz is an open forum where we discuss all things in the iOS world. That includes hardware such as iPhones, iPads, uh, Apple Watches, Apple TV. We'll talk about peripherals, hardware devices, headphones, keyboards. We'll talk about apps that uh, may be new or somebody has a question about. We'll talk about anything as long as it's about the iOS world. We do not talk about other Apple devices, and we don't do Windows. So... With that, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the iBug world this week. Um, obviously, tonight we're doing the uh, iBug buzz, and at the halftime, we'll talk about those movie clues for the movie that's coming up this Friday. Um, tomorrow night, we will have two events. We have the iBug mini buzz right here in Zoom. That's at 5 o'clock p.m. all time central. And we will do kind of a, a short version of what we're doing here tonight. We'll talk about um, iOS stuff for an hour. Uh, we will then have the uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. is Mac and Talk. And that's where you get to talk about the Mac. And we don't talk about iOS. We kind of flip the tables on that one. That's hosted by Chanel. And that goes on from uh, 7 o'clock to 8.30 or so. And that's tomorrow night, Tuesday, the 24th. There's nothing on Wednesday this week, but on Thursday we have It's iBugs Life. And that is facilitated by our very own George Batiste. And I believe this week George is going to talk about making pizza at home. And I know we all love pizza. And we all hate paying high prices for delivery pizza. So George is going to enlighten us all on how we can make our pizza at home. So uh, then, of course, Friday night is the iBug uh, Friday night audio described movie. And, of course, the aforementioned um, clues will be revealed tonight during our mid midpoint Um I'm not sure who's going to do the clues tonight. Who will it be? Well, that's as big a mystery as what the movie will be. So be sure and be here at the midpoint. Don't, you know, go to the kitchen and get a snack or anything and leave your headphones behind. Um, because you don't want to miss all of that. This weekend on Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m., is the iBug Apple Workshop, and this week it will be all about the new iOS 18 operating system for your iPhones and the iPad OS for iPad. I believe we mostly focus on the phone, but it'll be about iOS 18, and I believe Herbie's going to be running that presentation, but don't hold me to that. I could be wrong. But Guaranteed, if you're here at 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, you will find out, as will we all. And I'm sure there'll be a very enlightening presentation. Then, of course, next Monday night, we will be back here to do it all over again on the Monday night iBug Buzz. So that's a brief look at what's coming up in the iBug calendar for later on this week. So, have I forgotten anything else? Well, you can't tell me because you're muted. But you know what? We are going to fix that and and make it so you can unmute. What we'd like to do now is go around the room, as you know, like I'm telling you, like you don't know, go around the room and everybody introduce themselves. Just tell us, tell us who you are. Tell us where you're joining us from. From, and most importantly, we want to know um, if if you're new to iBug, if you're new to the iBug buzz, just uh, say hello. Let us give us an opportunity to recognize you as a newcomer. So let me show you how it's done to get us started. My name is Brad, and I'm joining from Dallas, Texas. 
This is Desi, and I'm in Franklin, Tennessee. Welcome, This Desi. is Robert Chandler, Arizona. Hey, Robert. Julie. Hey, Julie. Gary Claudia and Austin. Sitting. Gary? And I'm Claudia sorry, was that Claudia? Welcome, Claudia. Cheryl's from Cleveland. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. Paul in Columbus. Hey, Paul. Vincent to New Jersey. No, Vincent. No, wait a minute. Back to Cleveland. Was that Cleveland, Texas or Cleveland, Ohio? Cheryl from Ohio, Cleveland. Okay, just making sure because there is a Cleveland, Texas, just northwest of Houston. So making sure. Okay. Pat from Ohio. I know, Pat. Hello, Pat. Oh, I did know. Welcome. That's a regular, and I know she's from Ohio. (laughs) Helene from Woodstock, New York. Hello, Helene. Bad time to go to Arizona, isn't it, Helene? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry I cut somebody off. It's David and Houston. Hey, David. Hi. Ed from Georgetown, Ontario. Welcome, Ed. Hi. Brian from Ontario. Hello, Brian. John Hello, from BC, Brian. Canada. Hello, John. John. Hello, it's Vanessa from Georgia. Hello, Vanessa. Hi. This is Hello, Dickie. Gloria from Houston. Welcome, Gloria. This is Dee up here in Southern Illinois. Welcome, Dee. Thank you. This is Leslie from Mesa, Arizona. Hello, Wesley. Are you new, Marvin Wesley? from Chicago. Hello, Marvin. Wesley, are you new? No, I. although I've been on only for about three weeks, but this is like the fourth time. Okay, well, welcome. Forgive me for not recognizing your name. I won't forget it. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. Thank okay, you. Marvin's here. All righty. Who's next? This is Roy in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, hello, Roy. Jake in Michigan. Welcome, Jake. Hello. We're in his Jody country, in no doubt. Hello, Jody. Hey, Brad, this is Desi. I just wanted to point out to you that that gentleman's name is Leslie with an L, not Wesley. But Leslie, thank yes. you. Mm-hmm. Well, Greg in Texas. And Willis. Say it again. Linda and Willis. Hello, Linda. Hi. And Greg in Texas. Hello, Greg. Deb from Kansas. Hello, Deb. Anybody else? Thomas in Colorado. Right, Thomas. Welcome. Liz Fortworth. Hey, Liz. Cynthia in Houston. Welcome. Sorry, my screen reader was talking. Anybody else? Okay, well, speak now or wait till the halftime and we give another chance for everybody that wasn't able to do it in the beginning. Okay, well, we usually like to give our, uh, any anybody who's, who's new to the iPhone, new to uh, iBug or new to voiceover, an opportunity to ask a question. Um, do we have any new new users who'd like to uh, get us going with a question? The way we usually do this, I don't think I mentioned it. My other is, you know, this this call is driven by you guys. We we like to you know take your questions and then let our participants answer questions. So uh, we do like to keep our um, a topic to no more than five minutes. And if you've got more than one question, we ask you to just ask one question and then uh, get your answer and then yield to the next person. And then after a while, come back and ask your second question if you've got one. Um, we'd like to give everybody a chance. So any any anybody who's new or relatively new or hadn't been here very long like to get us going? If you're new to using the iPhone, ask a question. Or I have one. Anybody get a new iPhone? When the new iPhones were released on Friday, did anyone take the plunge and get themselves a new device, an iPhone or maybe even a new Apple Watch? If you care to t- did so and care to tell us about it, please do. This is Jake. I ordered an iPhone and I'll get it in October. Ordered, what did you order, Jake? The 16 Pro Max, 256 gray. Nice. I mean, black. I'm sorry. Black, black. Yeah, I was going to say there is no gray, but 
they used to sometimes have a black one and call it space gray, and then they had gray ones and called them space black. But yeah. They do that weird. Now they just call it black, and apparently it is black. Very yeah, nice. When are you supposed to get it? Between the 2nd of October and the 7th. Really? Okay. Yep. Exciting. What are yeah, you coming I'm excited from? For it. What did you have before? The six, I had the 15 Pro Max, and I'm upgrading. Okay, 15 Pro Max to 16 Pro Max. Very good. Yeah. What made you want to get to 16 Pros? Did you already had a 15 Pro Max? Um, well, just to keep up on the technology, and I, I broke even, you know, so I'm paying the same amount, you know. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You're paying a taxes. monthly thing? Yeah. No, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That's, that's cool. So they were Very offering good. a deal $650, so I took advantage of it. Well, that's exciting. Once you get it, you'll have to let us know what you think of it. Thank you, Jay. For this sure. is D. Thank you. Yes, D. Yeah, I want to ask him if he had to trade in his other phone. If not, I might be interested. Yeah, you have to do a trade in to get the. You have okay. to do a trade in to get yeah, the. Yeah, usually you do to get yeah, those. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. Thank you. If you don't, it's like fifty something, probably a month or fifty five. I think. Yeah, they have. I've lost track of all through Apple. Phones. If you go through on, um, the, for, I, on the on the iPhone replacement plan, yeah. If you go through, uh, yeah, if, on the iPhone upgrade, okay. it's like fifty five. If you don't trade in, okay, very good. Okay, anybody else get a new phone or anybody have a question? State your name, and I will of course call on you, Cynthia. Go ahead, Cynthia. Um. I just got an iPad Air, and um, yeah, it, to um, you know, to get more independence. Um, I do have a question about it, though. I don't know if anybody has one, but I turn Siri on, um, but when I turn off the iPad, it seems like it doesn't want to turn off, and Siri stays on. Mm -hmm. um, you just a sec, excuse me. You turn Siri on or VoiceOver on? Um, I use Siri, um, so I have Siri on, and then when I try to turn it off, you're supposed to push a little button on the right hand side plus the button at the top. But sometimes it doesn't go off. I I've managed to turn it off, so I think I'm doing it right. But I don't know if anybody else has an iPad. That Any, could help. Anybody using Siri on their iPad can help out Cynthia. Well, this is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. Yeah, I use um, Siri, and I find that it's very crazy. I'll ask my phone. I'll be saying, hey, Siri, where are you? And then the iPad's answering, and the iPad is talking a lot. And I do think Siri needs some... Um, some correction or something. I think it's a Siri issue. Hmm. Thank you. Interesting. This is Liz. Go ahead, Liz. I thought the question was the powering off with the button. On my iPad, which I don't remember what kind it is, it was just the top button that you hold down until it powers off. Oh. On an iPad, yeah. Cynthia? Go ahead, Cynthia. Um, well, I tried that, but what happens is Siri keeps coming on. <laughs> have, you, have you tried holding the button down until the shutdown screen comes up? And it may be longer than... Because mm -hmm. I... Well, my iPad's like six years old. Um, and... I will hold down the top button and then eventually the the what it says slide to power off, but I'm using voiceover so I have to tap it. But I hear it say slide to power off. Well eventually the little slider does come on, but um I don't know. I think I guess it's just a matter of fooling around with it. But it seems like Siri's conflicting with it. There's some sort of interference there, it seems like. Okay. Hmm. Is Ed? Go ahead, Ed. Is there not a setting to uh, like to have Siri work when your iPad or iPhone doesn't matter? 
is turned off. Like my my Siri works with my phone off. It um, shouldn't. If the phone is off, it's off. But there's a setting. But there's a setting for Siri, I believe, to um, to respond if it's turned off. I thought that's to respond if it's locked. I'll have to look at it. Mm, you talking about your phone or an iPad? I don't know. Well, I have an, an iPhone. I have an iPhone and an iPad, but I seem to recall them working. Um, like, if you want to know where your phone is or where your iPad is, Siri will respond, even if this, it's turned off. No? This is John. Go yeah, ahead, John. John will know. Um, yeah. I, th I think there are a lot of things going on we need to break down. So there's Siri, who's the virtual assistant, who to whom you can give voice commands. And then there's VoiceOver, which is the screen reader that blind people use to interact with their iPhone. Um, now, Siri, you can interact with Siri in different ways. You can interact with Siri by using one of the wake words, uh, like like I guess I'll just say um, Iris or Hey Iris, just so I won't trigger them. But you can also use a button, whether it's the round home button or the side button. Um, Siri can also respond as a or can also respond if, let's say, you go into accessibility and you enable. Um, there's a setting where it'll be enabled even if the face of your your eye device is face down. Um, and then there's also when you guys were talking about um, whether your device, the screen of your device is locked versus whether the, your device is off. Because if your device is completely off, you can't do anything. Whereas right. if your device is simply, if the screen is simply locked, then it just means that you've, you've um, closed the screen so that you don't have to touch the screen and interact with it. So... I just wanted to clarify all of these things because um, the only way you could really turn Siri off is if you go into the Siri settings and toggle it off. And and the same thing goes with voiceover. But if you press the power button and you, unwake, you unlock your screen, then voiceover will speak. But Siri will only speak if you do one of the performed um, tasks with a button or your voice. Excellent, John. Nice is Jody. clarification. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, I think the other confusion is that when you hold down the power button, it brings up that shutdown prompt. You still have to act on it. Just because it's just because the prompt is there, it's not going to shut down until you either slide it or do, do a one finger double tap on it, and then it will shut down your phone. Exactly. Thank you, Jody. So. Maybe that clears up some confusion and as to whether th when the screen is locked, it's not off. It looks off. It's There's nothing on the screen. It doesn't do anything when you tap it, like John said, but it is the device is on. And it would, if you have, hey, Iris, or just Iris, voice, voice activation enabled, it will hear and it will respond. But that's because it's on, but it's locked, as John said. Well, maybe this is, hopefully that clears up some confusion. Go ahead. Who are you here? This is Ed. Ed, please. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, if if she had her voiceover turned on when she hit that power button, um, voiceover would say double tap to power down. Actually, and, so and that's slide just to power what, off. Or slide to power off. But, yeah, you, but because voiceover is on, you don't slide it, you mm -hmm. double tap it. Yeah, I'm all right, exactly. So she doesn't. But it have still a, reads what the screen says, and the screen says slide to power off because that's what a what you do when you're not using VoiceOver. Okay, this is Ed. There's a little switch I, there to I, run your finger on it. I was just wondering: is, is the woman that had the question is she blind or can she see? Like, I know, is, Cynthia, is are you using VoiceOver? Or are you just using Siri to do voice commands? Um, I have low vision, so I try. I'm I'm using Siri mainly okay, right you're now. You're not using VoiceOver. No, I'm not using okay. VoiceOver. Thank you, though, for all the responses. There you They're go. Helpful. Hopefully, that helps you out. Thank this you. is John. Okay. 
Yeah, John, and then let's move on to something new. Go ahead. There is one more thing I'll say is that there are some instances where you can't perform other tasks until you clear the series screen and you can clear it by doing whatever button or gesture will take you back to your home screen or for, I think for a voiceover user, sometimes you can double tap a certain button on the screen or you can do the scrub gesture. So I just wanted to make that clear that if you're in a situation where, you know, your iPad is your iPad or your iPhone isn't responsive, it may be because the Siri screen still thinks you want to talk to Siri. Exactly. They have a Siri follow-up mode, I think is what it's called. And it will keep that screen up and it's waiting in case you have a follow-up question to ask. All right. Thank you. Um, this is John. Really- this is clear. Can I say something real quick on that? Uh, about this or something new? Let's move on to something new. I think we've just, covered this subject thoroughly. Oh, I was just so, going to say, to clear Siri, you can just say, thank you, Siri, and it'll go away. Yeah, we'll do it, too. That will dismiss. Tell you what, Liz, let's, let's, um, let's go to Roy. I heard Roy, and then if you've got something else, Liz, we'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, no, Liz took care of it. That's what I was going to say. All righty, very to good. Thank you guys Siri. both. That was a important thing. We had not covered the saying thank you thing, because that does get rid of it. There's no way to turn off that follow-up mode. We've talked about that in here several times, and a number of us have looked at Siri settings, and Siri follow-up is something, I think it was introduced in iOS 17, or was it? I think it was 17, because we went around and around about that a year ago when it was new. So it's got a new question. Something. This, this is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. Um, I have... Um a problem with the the text messages. Um, When text messages come in, um, I I can't always find where they are. I mean, I could speak and ask um, Iris to read my message, but in general, when I go into the messages, and I'm also, I obviously must have a ton of messages, but I have an old audio recording of a message from last August or September and I thought that I finally went in because the I bug you know the class t- taught me to um, only save message for and I saved it for like six or months or a year or whatever but now all of a sudden it's so creepy because now that same message is coming through the iPad. Oh, just rand randomly, yeah. and it's I don't cause even. It, just because yeah. Halloween's coming up, I yeah. <laughs> in a month. Yeah, it's very ghoulish, and it it does. Mm. It's creepy because there's no. I don't know. Are my text messages on my iPad as well? And I just never. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so where? Because you're I... signed in to your Apple account, and you're probably sharing yeah. in iCloud. Uh, right. The, yes. I messages are shared through iCloud, so they will show up. And let me tell you something else that happens. Anybody update to IO, iOS 18 last week? I did. And all kinds of messages from months ago yes. reappear in yes. my list of conversations. Wow. And um, well, there are some there that I've kept on purpose, but a lot of them that I had deleted and they were even partial conversations because I've had conversations with the same person, obviously, since then. And those are deleted. But what shows up was uh, that person's name and a group of back and forth text messages. It wasn't the entire conversation going back that far. It was just a couple of days worth of a conversation from like seven or eight months ago. It's really weird. But that happens. I see that happens every time a major um, iOS version update comes out, like from 16 to 17, 17 to 18. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, well, this but it is, does it. Yeah, this is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. So um, I um, was, I, I have my phone updated to 17.7, and I haven't gone to the 18. So I said, why don't I go into the iPad and put the iPad at 17.7? But that's not an option. When you go into general and you go into software update on the iPad. 
All right, I muted everybody. So go ahead, Helene, and unmute. Helene? Helene, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Is that John? Oh, sorry. My apologies. That's okay. That's okay. Helene, unmute and come back. I had somebody unmuted talking to their A lady. Okay. I, I can't. Now I'm back. Sorry. That's okay. I had somebody talking to their A lady. Yeah. They didn't know they were unmuted. Yeah. I know, and it sounded like someone's asking the temperature in my house, so I don't know. Maybe. But I, I don't live by a lake, so. Um, but yeah, I, think, I know. Yeah, but I think that um, it's confusing to me why it's not an option on the iPad to go to seventeen point seven. It's only I'd have well, to jump into eighteen. But eighteen was available. Oh yes, and I didn't want to do it on the iPad because the iPad would. It says I'm on 17.6.1, but it won't offer me 17.7. But then that creepy message that it's an audio message of, Hi, Helene. This well, is Rose. Don't you have to trigger it to listen to it no, for it to do that? No, no, it's just is coming on. I don't know about that. That's pretty spooky. It's <laughs> something about a, yeah. Stephen, a Stephen <laughs> King book. Yeah, really. I don't know. This is no, Jake. I have an explanation. This is Sarah. Go. Oh. Okay, hang on. Let's see what Jake's got. You got something, Jake? Yeah. Um, the reason why that could be is because maybe this is the um, 17.7, they said it was for security patches, and maybe the iPad doesn't need a security patch. Uh, well, it'll come out even if it doesn't. I have an iPad that won't go to 18, but it it showed 17.7 was available. If it's on 17 at all, 17.7 will be available. Uh, I guess I would say, but but it's interesting that eighteen's available, but not seventeen seven. Yeah, I'd go back and check. I bet seventeen point seven will eventually show up. Okay. When's the last time you checked it? Today. Today. Yes. Okay, got me. I don't know. This is John. Go ahead, John. Um, Helene, do you have auto updates? Um, the, the software updates the automatic updates turned on because sometimes I've had situations in which my mom's iPad, the automatic updates would be on and it wouldn't, it wouldn't push the update. So then I'd have to turn off auto update and then uh, I'd see the update. And then after I do the update, I can turn it back on. Oh, you may want to give that a try. I'll try that. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Who's this? Sarah. Okay, Sarah. Uh, I have an iPad, and I updated it to 17.7 and then updated it to 18. So, um, I mean, my experience is that you have to go further down. Like, then it says, oh, do you want to update to 18? Um, But I got both options. But her, her issue is she sees 18 down at the bottom, but it's not offering her 17.7. It yeah, just says yeah, I she's know. She's on seventeen point six point one, and right, and okay, but it, but it, you know, I, I did update the seventeen point seven to seventeen point seven, and it, it, but I, you know, I had to go. Obviously, you have to go down further than the automatic updates, which never work for me, um, and mm. just go down far enough, and then, but I, I think that's weird that only 18 was being offered because I had both offered. Yeah. uh, I had on, on release day, 18 was offered and it said my, I was on 17.6.1 and my iOS 17 was up to date uh, on my phone. Um, And then later in the day, when I came back to actually do the 18 update, it said that 17.7 was available. Now my iPad is too old for 18 and it offered me 17 7 which i i let it do but yeah this is sarah uh, mine yes, sarah. mine didn't mine didn't come i i i couldn't update earlier on monday right um, i think like like john said if you have automatic updates turned on it may not be offering it to you um yes. right away but if you turn off automatic updates then it may show up and you can do it as a manual update yeah mm-hmm. That's what I do, and I think right. that one of the things is that certain areas 
get it first. That is and true, yeah. It's I'm weird. assuming that we up here in northern Vermont <laughs> weren't well, one of the chosen. Think, you would think anywhere in the United States would get it yep. at the same time. I don't know. You mm -hmm. hope. Uh, this is Vincent. Go ahead, Vincent. Yeah, I'm in New Jersey, and I don't have an availability of uh, 18 on my iPad. I did what kind of my, iPad do you have? Uh, I bought it in, uh, what is it, in 20, uh, I, I think it's a sixth generation, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. I've had it for about two years. When I bought it, it was new. That should be able to get 18. Right, but I don't have it available. The, I, 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 do you I, have automatic updates turned on? I'm going to, no, I don't. I don't. Okay. Interesting. I but I, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Let's see what John's got to say. Oh, so my mom also has a sixth generation iPad. And when I looked at online articles, they said that the sixth gen doesn't support uh, 18. Ah. It just goes up to 17.7, oddly enough. So no, nothing past 17. Because yeah, right now, 17.7, if they come up with a 17.8, that would go on. It just won't go to 18. Yeah, that's correct. I have a uh, iPad Pro 10.5 that I believe came out in the fall of 2017. I got it in uh, January, I think, of 2018, and it will not go to 18. It's 17 as far as it'll go. But Pat. Go ahead, Pat. I turned automatic updates off because I had a lot of documents I needed to do on pages. So I turned it off because I did not want to do the 18. But then the 17, is it point eight or 9 came out? It's point seven, I had 17.7. Point seven. So... I had automatic updates off. It automatically updated last night. I had updates off. I don't understand why they keep turning automatic to updates on when I had it turned off. I don't know. I have mine off and it never... I notice I did an update on... Um... <laughs> Well, I did something with both my phone and my wife's phone, and they were new phones. And it wanted to turn, my wife's phone wanted to turn automatic updates on. And um, I can't remember if I was able to say no, don't, or something, but it was part of the setup process of a new phone. Um, but I don't know. They do want to, they do sometimes do things you don't want them to do. Right. I think I have mindset to download updates, but not install them until I do them manually. This is John. Yeah. Go ahead, John. You can, uh, yes, Brad, you kind of alluded to what I was going to say is that um, if you have the main automatic updates toggle turned on, you can go in there and there are different toggles you can turn on or off. Like there's security updates, there's the download, right. and you, you just want to make sure that they're, the toggles are on or off according to your preference. Okay, thank you. And, and and I didn't understand, Pat, you said you had pages documents. That I you... need to work on. So I, you know, I didn't want to do the 18 update, and There's I no made reason. sure it was off, but I am having problems now with pages so I think I'm going to have to do the 18 update tonight and because I was going to say, I don't know why you'd be having any problem with pages. If your pages and documents are in your files app, that means they're in iCloud. Right. And in your iCloud and, and updating your phone should not affect those. Okay. And there should be no reason why a document that works in pages in iOS 17 wouldn't work in pages in iOS 18. Okay. I'm going to do it tonight, but I just couldn't figure out why it goes ahead and updates when I had it turned off. But you're saying I need to check it in settings, so I will do that. You need to... I'm sorry, I missed what you said. 
Someone just said there's settings for updates and stuff, so I need to check in the settings. When when you go into settings and then general and then software update, up at the top is a button that says automatic updates. And when you op tap on that, it takes you to another screen and you're able to turn on automatic updates. And then there's a second option to download the update, but not install it until you manually trigger it. And that's kind of handy because it'll go ahead and download it. And as long as you got room on your device, now if you've got, if you're, you know, limited on space and you don't want it downloading a big update until you're ready. You may not want any automatic update turned on. I think I let mine download the update, but I tell it don't do the update until I hit the install button. Okay. And that makes it a little faster because you don't have to wait for it to download. Okay. But there's two up at the top. There's two. There's, the switch that says automatic updates. You tap on it, and it takes you to another screen where there's two things to toggle on or off. Okay. And obviously, if you take automatic updates off, you can't do the other one. If you turn it on, then you get to say download the update, but don't install it until I decide. And that's either on or off. But if you say no automatic updates, then you don't get the second question. Okay. Thank you. And then in the middle of the screen, it'll tell you either there's an iOS 17 update, which there isn't because you said you already did it, and yeah, it'll say your yeah, iOS 17 is up to date. And then down at the bottom, you'll see it says iOS up iOS 18 is available. And then you tap on that, and then you'll get the update screen for that. Okay. Thanks. This is, this is John. Go ahead, John. So I just wanted to go back to what uh, uh, she was talking about regarding pages. So um, the only time you'd probably want to be hesitant to hold off on updating to iOS 18 it, is if anyone has mentioned any problems with pages itself. Like, I mean, if you're able to use voiceover and access your files, then that part like like what Brad said that that shouldn't be affected because your your files are stored on the cloud but if let's say pages is preventing you from doing something you used to do because the if there's an updated version of pages because of iOS 18 then um that would be different but if if people are reporting that pages still re works fine with iOS 18 there's no reason not to do the update and there is, an up, is well, there was an updated version of Pages, Numbers, and Keynote on my Mac. Um, I would assume if there's an update to Pages, Numbers, and Keynote on iOS, the App Store did it in the background and I didn't see it. But I bet okay. if there was one on the Mac, there was one on iOS. This is Brian. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. There's Brian. Let's see what Brian's got. Yeah, no, when I did the update which was Tuesday morning, uh, mm -hmm. first thing in the morning. One thing I found afterwards, because it is a large update, it's 6.8 gigs. And once it was all done and rebooted, I was wondering, because my phone, um, the battery was going down fast and I couldn't not get into my files in, in there. And I'm going, what the heck is going on? So I went through the settings and uh, under battery, there was a message there saying the download has been completed, but we are working in the background. Correct. It would not it's allow indexing. Me. Yeah, it was indexing. Mm -hmm. So that's why it wouldn't let me into the, my files. Yeah, that happens every time there's a major update or if you mm -hmm. get a new phone and set it up um, and you're going to feel your phone is hot. Yeah, exactly. For about a day or two. And it is indexing and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's more than others, but yes. But I, I noticed like after the I idea. did the 18 yeah. update on my 15 Pro, it was I like hot. the message, though. I like the message they tell mm -hmm. you because before we didn't have that. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Well, let's, 
let's move along to another topic. That was a good topic. We spent a extra amount of time on it because I think everybody's got a lot of questions about iOS 18 and the update process. Um, cool. Do we have anybody another chance to ask us something else? Somebody that hadn't had a chance. We've got plenty of time left to the top of the hour. So this is Paul. Go ahead, Paul. It's about, pardon me, 18, but is, is there any other significant problem with updating to 18? I mean, it's, I oh. have not noticed any. There's some weird stuff, but I don't find any, you know, is there's a difference in a bug and a difference in a change in the iOS. And a lot of times things change and they're very frustrating, but that's not a bug. A bug can be frustrating too. Um, I haven't really found any bugs. I found some things that I had to figure out that were different. But once I figured them out, they're not a problem. It, what would other people? Other people have their experiences. We'd like to hear about that. This is Brian. Brian, go ahead. And I don't know if it's a bug or my phone, but I was trying to create a folder on the weekend with two apps, and I was not getting the folder option. What kind of folder? Uh, just a, an app, a folder to put my, like, to, it's my weather app. Uh, I was okay, a putting, folder to put apps in. Yeah. But were yeah. you trying to put a, make a folder and just put one app in it? No, two apps. Okay, so you were trying to yeah. edit, take another f app and move it on top of another, and you usually get the create folder with, That's right. and it'll yeah. say, the, it wasn't working? No, I didn't get that one. <laughs> Hmm. Was it still indexing? Was it right after the update? No, no, no. This was on the weekend, and I updated my phone last Tuesday. So. Oh, okay. I haven't tried to do that. Anybody else have a similar? And well, issue? somebody else, somebody else also told me that they tried to they removed an item from their dock, and uh, when they tried to put uh, another app on their dock at the bottom, they couldn't do it. Interesting. This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. I, I'm on the VI phone list, and I've heard both of those problems mentioned. Interesting. I have not tried to rearrange any apps. or. This is Deb. Go ahead, Deb. Um, I found that in the app library, if you tap on a folder there, on my phone, I get nothing. <laughs> VoiceOver won't read anything that's in a folder in the app library. The apps hmm. are there, but it won't read them, which I thought was strange. That is strange. Anybody know anything like that in the app library? I never go in the app library. It's something I wish I could just turn it off. But... This is Shree. Go ahead. Oh, Shree, go ahead. My God, um, is it four a.m. there? Uh, yeah, five something. Um, <laughs> wow. Have you tried doing a one finger double tap and hold, and then trying to move it to the um, app to see if it creates a folder that way, instead of you know swiping up or down and running the edit? You're talking do a one finger double tap and hold and try to drag, drag. the old yeah. way. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is I noticed that, you know, we, with the iOS 18, we can move apps around on the home screen. And the way that I figured out to do it is doing a one finger double tap hold and dragging around instead of uh, flicking up or down, to move the app. Hmm. Okay. That's another option. I remember when that was the only way we could move apps and I was so delighted when they came out with the new way. I've never tried the old way anymore. All right. Well, so somebody has to give that a try and let us know if that works for them. Okay. Who's got a Who's got a quick? Who's got a question that hadn't had a chance yet? This is uh, This is Ed. Ed, go ahead. Um. Excuse me. Hold on. I I have to get a drink. I'll uh, mute myself. Okay. All right, well, Ed gets his drink. Anybody else? Especially if somebody hadn't had a chance, and wait and ask a question. 
This is Jody. Jody. Yeah, I updated to 17.7 on my SE2 and on my SE3, and I haven't updated to 18 because I'm not brave enough. But one strange thing has happened. (laughs) One (laughs) pretty hearing of all these bugs. I'll wait till 18.1. Um, on my SE2, I keep getting tips, and I'm like, how do I can't remember where you go to turn tips off. I don't know why all of a sudden tips are on, but they are there. And namaste, uh, Shri. I hope you have a nice day. Six o'clock in the morning. Well, this I will funny. say I have a iPhone SE2. I don't. It's not activated. I use it like an iPod Touch, and I did update the 18, and it's just fine. Who can okay. tell Jody how to turn those tips off? This is John. John, go ahead. So if you open up the settings app and you go to notifications, um, you you want to scroll down to tips. And then um, when you tap on tips, then you, you have the option to turn it off or you can deselect the different functions. Ah, this is Jody. Thank you. Deselect the what function? Well, so I just want to clarify. So she can choose. She can turn everything off in tips or she can deselect. So, um, you know, the there's... Day, I think they call it, right? Well, the like they they treat tips like an app. So when you go under there under notifications, you can turn like there are the different options like um, lock screen, control center, banners. So you can turn them right, all right, off right, completely, right. or you can choose which ones you want to leave on where you want them. Okay, mm-hmm. right. Thank you. Very good. I wonder how it got turned on. That's interesting. They do things like that. I don't know. Thank you, John. Okay. Hopefully that will get brave and do the update, Jody, and let us know how it works. Go ahead. Who else was that I heard? Karen. Karen, please go ahead. I don't have a, a music plan, but if I got an Apple music plan, um, do I, would I listen to the podcast in there? or And if so, are the podcasts ad-free? I mean, do they have podcasts? App, who can, okay. Who can talk about Apple Music and Apple Podcasts and help Karen understand what's going on with those are two separate things, I believe. So, Well, I guess my question oh. is, are, if I have a plan, do the podcast then come through the Apple Music plan or they don't? They come from this. Let's see if Jake has an answer for us. Well, if you – the Apple Music plan in – um, Apple Podcasts are two totally separate things. Um, Apple has a podcast player called Apple Podcast, and Apple Music has their music or called Apple Music. Apple, what Apple Music gives you is um, Apple Music. It, you know, it gives you music. So if you pay for one of their plans, it gives you unlimited um, streaming on their songs, um, where you can create playlists, unlimited playlists. And listen to 12 million songs or more um, without having to pay for every single song. And the plan for the individual is $9.99, $10, and I think it's like $100 a year. And podcast is free. Or there's a family plan, too. Yeah. Right? Yep. I think there's a student option. There is. But okay. you're saying podcast is has nothing to do with Apple Mute. That's separate. That's under the podcast app. That's correct. Right. This is Karen. Okay, Karen. Well, how do you get Apple Podcasts with no commercials? I guess that's not. Ooh. That's what I'm looking for. So I, I was just thinking that if I get it on mm-hmm. there to listen to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who oh, knows about okay. podcasts with no commercials? Oh, great. Uh, this is Jake. Do you have any answer? Yeah, go ahead, Jake. Well, it's up to the creator. So if the creator puts commercials into it, then you're going to have commercials. If they don't place commercials in, then they're not going to have them. This so, is Brad, and I believe on some of them, there's a way to pay for whatever they call it. I'm going to call it a premium subscription or something. So, like, I like the Apple Insider podcast, and I believe on the Apple podcast app, I, it is available to go in there, and I don't know what the price is, if it's $5 a month or what it is, but you get ad-free versions of the podcast. This is David. Go ahead, David. Uh, yeah, I think Apple was trying to promote people to 
make their podcast, you know, like subscription based. If they wanted to, you know, cut out the ads, you know, people could pay a certain amount and and do it through the Apple Podcast app. I don't know if that really ever got popular. The ones I listen to, um, they generally use this service called Patreon. Uh, I think it's P A T R E O N or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, where you can like pay a monthly fee and then they'll give you a special link, you know, to listen to the podcast ad free and maybe some other benefits and things. Right. Um, but I, I used the 30 second skip. That's going to be your friend. Um, so I don't yeah. know if Apple podcast has that, but the, they do. The, yeah. Yeah. This is Brad. Yeah, the yeah. Apple podcast that I brought up as an example, they do both. You can subscribe through Patreon and they will email you a link. And when you, use that link it creates like another podcast feed in your podcast app of choice be it apple podcast or overcast or maybe some others but they also have a way and i could be wrong about the patreon link in apple podcast but there is a way in apple podcast specifically for certain podcasts and the apple insider podcast is one of them where you can pay for the premium feature through an in-app purchase in the podcast app and get the podcast commercial free. Now that's not true for all podcasts, but that is true for um, that Apple insider. And I believe a couple others I'm aware of do that as well. So you want to look for that on a per podcast basis in the Apple podcast app. And then like David said, uh, Patreon is an option that may be available on certain podcasts. Thank you. Okay, we got about five more minutes. So let's do this is Ed. for a couple of minutes here. Okay, Ed, quick. Um, okay. My, uh, my keyboard, I have a, a 2022 and a Logitech keyboard every once in a 2022 while. 2022 what? Um, SE3. Okay. Um, Every once in a while, I will go to use, uh, get into emails, and it'll be the French keyboard. And okay. uh, the only reason, uh, the only way I figured out how to turn it off or, or get it back to the English one is either go into settings and redo it there or turn off my iPhone and turn it back on. Now, I know that there's got to be some way of choosing that French keyboard so does anybody know how to choose the French keyboard and then unchoose it? Like, is there a this is, this function is key or whatever? Yeah, this is Brad down in the, on your iPhone. I don't use my SE as much. Let's get the home button. I use one without one. Uh, it should be in the lower right, lower left corner of the keyboard. It's a button where it says, I can't remember what it says. The only other keyboard I have turned on is emojis. But it would be that same button, and it would allow you to cycle through, like, um, I don't know if Canadian is different, U.S., English, emojis, and then since I don't have another one, when I press it, it goes back to U.S. English. If you have a French keyboard, I would think it would cycle through the three of them every time you push a button. Or maybe you don't have emoji turned on, but it, there should be a button in the lower right corner of the keyboard below the shift key. Lower right or lower left? Lower left, lower, excuse lower left. me. That's the FC button, function. I think it's called the function button. Well, I'm talking on the on-screen keyboard. You probably can't do it on an external keyboard. Well, I have the same button, uh, a Logitech. Okay. Um, okay. I just so know that it's on the on-screen keyboard. I don't know that it's on an external keyboard. It's not the FN key. It's a keyboard. It's a key that's on the on-screen keyboard. Okay. And that so may be not showing up when you're using an external keyboard. The on-screen keyboard doesn't usually show up. That's probably why you're not finding it. Well, maybe it may, but maybe that button is represented on the on the uh, the keyboard that I have, though, right? That I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just okay. gonna try and figure that out. So you say if I if I scroll through the different keyboards, you say that one button, you just keep tapping it and it switches keyboards? On the on screen keyboard. Do you have to be do you have to be in, in edit or compose or no. something? Uh, well, if the keyboard's on the screen, 
There's a key. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, for years now, I've found a key in the mm-hmm. lower left mm-hmm. corner. It's below the shift key. And it says, uh, I can't remember what it says. I just press it. On mine, it says emoji. It says switch keyboard or something like that. And I have two choices, U.S. English and emoji. And I would imagine if I added a Spanish keyboard or a French keyboard, it would it would switch. key. It switches between the installed keyboards. And you do that under settings, general typing, I think. I have to go look. This is That's John. something I do every day. Okay. Did I hear somebody else real quick? Because we are yeah, out of uh, time. Oh, I was just going to say quick, quick correction. Uh, settings, general keyboard. Okay, that's what I thought I said. Settings, general keyboard. But I couldn't remember if it was typing or keyboard. But yeah, one or the other. Thank you, John. Saving me again. All right, folks, we're close enough. We're 59, so we're going to call it the top of the hour. And then we are going to begin our halftime festivities. First of all, this, do we let's give a chance for anyone that joined us after we did introductions at the beginning of the show. Um, who didn't get a chance, this is your second call for um, say hello, say your name, tell us where you're joining us from if you didn't get a chance to do it the first time. Now's your chance. Terry from Kingston Heights. Hey, Terry. Uh, Jody, Canada. Hey, Jody. Shri from India. Hey, Shri. I heard somebody else. This is Sarah in Vermont. Hey, Sarah. Hey. Elizabeth from Newfoundland, Canada. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Anybody else? Last call. Okay. Now. Marie and Reno. Marie and Reno. There you are. Yeah. Welcome, Dwight. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Last call. Going, going, gone. All right. Let's move on to what we're really all here for. Um, we want to find out what the movie is, and more importantly, we want to hear those crazy movie clues. So I don't know who's going to do those clues. Uh, is it the iBug guy? Is it substitute iBug guy? Who's um, out there? Yes, yes, yes. I'm back again. Two weeks in a row. Lucky you. Yeah. Well, do we already shared with them the times of the movie and all that good stuff this Friday. I hope Brad or somebody who did announcements earlier. Wow. All right. I'll go ahead. Nobody's messing up. Sorry. I tried to sneak away to get another bottle of water. No, we talked about the movie. Yes, we said uh, it happens, but I don't think we mentioned the time. All right. Friday. Eight eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is the movie start time. You can jump in early at 7.15 p.m. Central for our pre-movie social where we have lots of frolicking fun. And then immediately following the movie, lots of good discussion, critique, and then some trivia. So that's the lineup for Friday. But first, we've got to find out what it's going to be. And I've got some clues here for you. Well, before we do the clues, does everybody know what's WD-40? Anybody not? Ever heard of WD-40? It's a lubricant. And I found a number of other uses for WD-40. 
And I'll share a couple of those with you right now. First, you can use it. Any gardeners out there, if you have garden tools or anybody does yard work. Jake, I've used it. Okay. Well, you probably haven't used it for what I'm going to share with you. If you have any garden tools, you know, little shears or rake, or shovels or that kind of stuff, you can spray WD-40 on it to help you first clean them if you need to, and then also it protects them from rusting, and it makes it easier to clean up the next time. Second use of WD-40 that you probably never thought about is... Anybody ever have a zipper that gets stuck on a jacket or your pants? Well, squirt a little WD-40 and it will slide up and down like it's never seen it before. So (laughs) just be careful because that zipper is moving along and you don't want to have anything (laughs) sticking through there that you don't mean to have. (laughs) All right. Michael is back. It is now time for... (laughs) Let's try that again. It is now time for... (laughs) All right, that didn't quite work out right tonight. But anyway, it got got caught in the zipper. (laughs) Did not use my nasal spray this morning. All right. We've got five clues. You get one guess per clue. We should have used WD-40. Everybody gets to unmute. Stay unmuted during this whole thing we're going to do here. And what else? Oh, be sure to say your name. Wait to be acknowledged before trying to provide an answer. And we want titles of the movie. If you've been a winner in the last three weeks, then you are ineligible this week. So let's get right into clue One number guess per clue. Uh, this what is Terry? Yeah, one guess for a clue. clue. Did you? Okay. All right. Thanks, Terry. Clue number one. Our film this week takes place in the great state of, or maybe it's not a, is it a state? Yeah, I guess it's a state, but they call it something else. I forget. Somebody that lives there. I'm sure there's people on here from this state. Pennsylvania. Commonwealth. Commonwealth. That's right. There's a few Commonwealth. states that are also called Commonwealths. All right. Anybody from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can guess on this one. They should know this film takes place there. Uh that's going to be Marie. one of those nights. Who is that? It's Marie. Marie, go ahead. F- Philadelphia. Philadelphia is in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It is a film. I think we've seen it. No? Seen right here. Yeah, we have seen it. Okay. Sorry about that, Marie. Okay, I hear right. Raheel. I'm going to say either Scranton or Pittsburgh. All right, you only get one. I Pick think I'm going to say Pittsburgh. All right. Movie title. I don't know that that's the name of a movie, but we'll go with it. And it is absolutely incorrect. All right, we're looking for a movie title, you guys. We're going to move to clue number two. Throughout the film... The main character evolves, who evolves from a self-centered person 
like Brad, to a more <laughs> compassionate <laughs> remark. individual. Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. The Philadelphia kid. The Philadelphia kid. Oh, Nikki is so. <laughs> That's okay. That's cool. Wrong. Good try, Nikki. Pete. Ooh, Pete. Hey, <clears throat> Groundhog Day. Groundhog huh. Day. That takes place in what's the name of that town? Pa- Paxatani. Oxitani. Oxitani. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you spell that? <laughs> All right. P E N N. Me check with the judges because there was a little thing there that he said that was maybe not quite correct. But we Groundhog go, Day was not correct. We will go to the judges. <clears throat> judges caucus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Groundhog Day. <laughs> Groundhog. <laughs> we have missed you, Michael. <laughs> Depends on this answer whether I miss him. <laughs> you don't know if you missed him or not. That's right. Oh, Groundhog is it's two words. No, Groundhog, it's one word. All right, the judges have come back and provided a final answer. Since Pete said ground hog day <laughs> two words oh no we will go ahead and give it to him ding 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 <laughs> wow. I, I can't believe you haven't shown that before that's a great movie and since we've been having so many serious movies, we thought we would throw yeah. one in there. The Time for a comedy, fun. yes. Fun. Mm. So, as many of you know, 1993, Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, mm. romantic Great. comedy. Yeah. Lots of good laughs throughout this movie. And <laughs> for Pete. You can guess what you're going to get, Pete. Uh, a, a black and white, a black, red, and white groundhog. <laughs> and then, yes, true. I no, they only come in blue and yellow. Red, uh, white, and black. Hmm. You get your own version of Puxatani Pete. <laughs> 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 To yours to keep and frame as you choose, <laughs> or whatever you want to do with it. All right, so great guest, right. Pete, and hopefully everyone will join us this Friday as we indulge ourselves in. And Nikki, Murray. I have a question. Go ahead, Nikki. What kind of prize do you give for somebody who can spell Poxitani? <laughs> oh wow! You will, get, you will get some of the ice sculptures that, that Bill he does. Go right. Right. I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to try it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else has to try it. Yeah, this is Jody. I bet yes. you Rahil can spell it. Go uh, ahead. Rahil. I was just wondering. Jody uh, keeps speaking up. Sorry, I was just wondering. Um. What, uh, how do you, like, get all the clues for the movie or the, all the time? Like, do I have to do, like, research on my end and then present it to you guys every Monday? Or how does that usually work? Well, a lot of kids, that's a trade we, secret. <laughs> we go into our private room and sit there and <laughs> contemplate. <laughs> and if nothing comes to mind, we just pull it out of our 
Huh. Or <laughs> 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 <All> your pocket. <laughs> And they just magically appear. Michael is Michael the permanent clue giver right here. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. So, oh, Jody's been trying to jump yes, in here. Go ahead, Jody. Been, yeah, yeah. I just, I just wanted to let you know, because I know you live in Houston, I just wanted to let you know that if you put WD-40 on a snow shovel, that the snow doesn't stick. On a what? Uh, snow shovel. shovel. Snow, snow shovel. shovel. Yeah, yeah, that's... Okay, that goes, along, that goes along with the tools, yes. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. often do they have to use that in Texas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I figure you didn't know about that one. <laughs> but you can do, any, you can do anything with WD-40 and duct tape. If it moves and it shouldn't, you put duct tape on it. If it should move and it doesn't, you put WD-40 on it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good yeah. deal. That's a good, one. <laughs> that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. When that Household should have both. Wait a minute. I we am have... going to bid everyone. Wait a minute. Was there a prize? prize? He yes. gave the prize. Yeah, I won the groundhog. Prize. The groundhog. Sorry, <laughs> <black. laughs> yeah, I really really tracked the groundhog. Yeah. Nice to have you back, Michael. Well, they're good. Tony Pete. He's calling the bucks to Tony from now on. Red, white, and black. Tell the iBug guy to say goodbye, iBug guy. Goodbye, iBug guy. All right, that was Sandia's favorite part when we mute everybody mm-hmm. and you can't unmute. Yeah. Let's see, Pete, I see you showed up better late than never. Can you unmute? Yeah. There he is. I talked Yeah, to I had friends from out of town and they uh wanted to get to their hotel so they took off early. But uh Very sorry nice. I missed the first half. Well, I did okay. just catch my Jaguars your, score. The, the part that matters. Your thing. Yeah, the Jaguars are playing the Buffalo Bills and they're losing thirty four to three at halftime. Well good. You're here and so I figured there was no reason to sit and watch the rest of the game. <laughs> no, there's not. So Pete has a little buzz bite segment for us because this was originally his gig. So, um, you want to give a little intro, Pete? Or uh, sure, this is me to play it. I've got it queued up. You you play it if you don't mind. But let me give a quick uh, setup for it. This is uh, just a quick tip for. Um, If you're stuck down in an email list or your messages list and you want to get to the top real quick, um, I use it all the time. So I hope it helps you guys somewhat. Let it rip, Brad, whenever you're ready. Okay, here we go. Today's quick bite is going to focus on an issue that I encounter pretty much every day when playing with my iPhone, and that is finding a quick way to get to the top of your screen, for example, your email inbox or your messages inbox, without having to flick repeatedly to the left one message at a time just to climb back to the beginning of your mail inbox or messages inbox. Of course, we're familiar with our four-finger single tap, which if you place toward the top of your screen will take you directly to the top of that screen. But sometimes even this shortcut gesture doesn't get us to the top of our list of emails or messages. So in this quick bite, we'll show you a shortcut that will take you straight to the top of your emails or messages list, regardless of how far down the list you happen to be. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's flick to our mail app. It's on our dock at the bottom of our screen. Mail, Gmail, back button. Now I'm flicking with one finger to the right just to get to the top of my email inbox list. Here's the first one, which is the most recent email. Messages, unread. IBUG today, IBUG night at the virtual movies, 9.29 p.m. I'm recording this quick bite on Tuesday, September 17th. This iBug email came in last night, which would have been Monday night, September 16th, just to give you a time frame. I'm pointing out the date of this email because it will be important to compare when we test our shortcut to climb back to the beginning of our email inbox. But first, we want to dive down into our list, and I'll accomplish this by using my three-finger swipe up to scroll down the list 
and go backwards in time. This will give us our starting position for reversing the process and moving back towards the most recent email on our list. So hold on, here we go. Messages. Page four of twenty. Page five of page six of twenty. Page seven of twenty. Page eight of twenty. Page nine of twenty. What you heard was the sound of my three finger swipe up gestures. Let's check the next email and the date. IBUG today. IBUG today events for August seven slash thirty one slash twenty four. We've gone back all the way to July thirty first, almost two months backwards. Now let's get back to the top of our list and those most recent emails. We know that flicking left will take us quite a while because we've gone back in time quite a bit. So let me try my four finger single tap toward the very top of the screen and then we'll see where in our email list that lands us. Four finger single tap toward the top of the screen. The Gmail back button. Now I'll flick to the right until we get to our inbox list and we'll see what date the most recent email has. Mailbox. Boxes. Heading. Gmail. No unread messages. Pete Lang. Re. If you think you are smarter than the previous generation. Ellipsis. 50 years ago the owner's manual of a car showed you how to adjust the valves. Today it warns you not to drink the contents of the battery. 8 slash 5 slash 24. Kind of a funny joke, but the date was August 5th, 24. So we are definitely not close to the top of our inbox and the email from iBug today from September 16th. So that four finger gesture towards the top of the screen did not get us to where we wanted to be. This brings us to our shortcut for tonight. In order to get to the top of a list in a screen, all we need to do is place one finger in the status bar. Remember the status bar is the strip that runs across the top of pretty much every screen on our iPhone. It contains the clock, our Wi-Fi data, cellular data, and our battery percentage. And I'll touch that status bar right now. One finger, lightly touch. Cellular, one of four bars, signal strength, status. By touching in that area, I've brought my voiceover focus to the status bar. Now I'll just perform a one finger double tap and we'll see where I land down on the screen. Single finger double tap. Cellular, page one of 22. You heard voiceover say page one of 22. That's an indication that we have gone to the top of our inbox list, page one of 22 pages. Let's double check. I'll flick to the right to our first message in the list, and it should be the iBug Today email from September 16th. Flicking to the right. Messages. IBUG Today. IBUG Night at the Virtual Movies. 9.29 p.m. And there we go. We're back to the top of our list with our most recent email message. This shortcut gesture works in almost any app or on any screen where there's a list. It works in your Messages app to get back to the top of your Messages list or the top of an individual thread. It works in the WhatsApp app when you're way down into a chat and you want to get back to the top. It works in Facebook and other apps when you're in similar situations. Easy peasy. And now we'll take some questions. Hey, one second there. Okay, we should be able to unmute now. Sorry, Any questions? I'm here. Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Uh, I just uh, came in here. Uh, how do I... Hmm, I guess I'd have to listen to the whole thing again to find out how to make that shortcut, huh? Uh, it's not... You don't have to... You all, you, well, if you know the situation I was in, when you're way down, for example, I was in my Correct. email app, you're way down, so the four-finger tap at the top doesn't get you to the to the beginning, the most recent email message. All you do is touch the status bar with your finger. You, see, you, you don't have to set anything up, just touch on that status bar at the top of the screen and do a double tap with one okay, finger. Okay, so you don't have to set up a shortcut. No, okay, I thought no you it's set just up the automatic. Shortcut. No. Okay, thank you for that. I call it a shortcut. I, that's my mistake, Jerry. Sorry about that. No worries. Rahil? Hey, Rahil. So, uh, since my battery health, when I check the battery health in the settings, since it's at 77% maximum capacity and it needs to be serviced, I was thinking about getting a new iPhone because I'm not really used to for me to replace the battery and stuff. So if I get the new iPhone, the 16... Hang on, hang on Raheel. We're talking about questions about Pete's demo right now, okay? 
Yeah, uh, hang on to that question until hang we on get to through. That question. See if there's any questions on the demo I just presented. And we'll take that we'll up after we later. get done with the Buzz Bite segment. Okay. This is Keisha. Yes, Keisha. So you can touch your finger anywhere at, at the top. Boom. Yes. Yep. And then just, yeah, I got yep. you. You'll touch Thank it up you. there anywhere. It'll either, but it will read just whatever item you touch. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're up in that status bar, you're good. Then the double tap will bring your uh, voiceover focus back to the top of that email list. Or as I said, in in your messages app, because you can do the same thing. Where if you got a lot of accumulated things on a list, I see it a lot in Facebook. Yeah. You want to get back up to the top to maybe, you know, post a, a fresh uh, post in Facebook. You're all the way down your news feed. You just do a single finger double tap up there and you're good. All right. Thank you. Terry. Yes, Terry. So the point is that you, whatever uh, app or whatever thing you're in, um, where you have a list of items, mm -hmm. it, you have to be specifically in that list. Uh, like emails or you have to be mm -hmm. in messaging or messages or whatever. Correct. That's when you do the, the go to the status bar and then do the one, one finger, finger double, double tap. tap. Yes, ma'am. And it takes you to the very top item in that list that you were that in. Yes, what you had to, you had to have been in the list to begin, right? It brings your focus to the very top. Yes. Right. I just Thank wanted you, to Good. clear that Appreciate up. Appreciate that. Yeah. Any other questions? Pat. Yes, Pat. Will it work if you're in a long thread of text to get to the top? Yes. Of the thread? Yes. Okay. Either either I when you're in the in, Yeah, if you're in the individual, like if you and I are trading texts on one screen, it will get you to the top of you know, the very um, – I guess it would be the earliest, the first of our individual texts or on your inbox on your text screen, you know, which is where you have all of your contacts or your text groups. It will get to you, get to the most recent group at the very top of those lists. Yes. So it Thank works you. Too. I just yes. asked that because I had done that by accident one time. I'm like, hooray, I found the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be a big believer in the four finger tap at the and top. It doesn't work. And it doesn't get you to the top. It gets you to the top of the screen if you want a back button like that, but not the top of uh, of whatever list you're in. Yeah. Right. Good job. And thanks, Pat. Any other questions? All right, Bradford, all yours. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. That was thank a good you. demo. Very handy feature there, distinguishing between the four finger single tap and using the status bar. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, um, we're three minutes before the bottom of the hour. Rather than go to other questions, I think I'm going to make it audible and let's just go straight to our monthly iToy segment. We do this on the fourth Monday of every month. And if you get out your fingers and toes, you can count it up. This is the fourth Monday. So let me turn it over to the iToy master himself, Herbie. Are you here, Herbie? Did I catch you three minutes early? You're not ready? Herbie? Tell you what. Let's let her go to Raheel's in. question real quick. Let's do Raheel's question real quick. What was your question, Raheel? So um, apparently my, my my battery health is at significantly degraded. It's at 77 maximum capacity. Mm. So I'm I'm thinking about upgrading my phone because I want the um, signal issue to be resolved because I don't want to hear no eh, 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 when I when I get cut off in the middle of a conversation. When you're making or, a phone call. Yeah. Okay, and, that's a and, carrier issue. Okay. Yeah, things like that. So it's like um, I'm thinking about upgrading my phone. So um, when I was away at our state convention, the National Federation of Law, my mom went to the Apple store and she looked at the 16 and said that I should get the 16 Pro with three cameras. So which iPhone would you guys recommend in the 16 models? 
because I only needed to use Ira sometimes or take a screenshot of something or take a photo of a receipt and things. And also, how, how do you do the um, start the new uh, Braille screen input? Okay, well, I think I heard Herbie. Let Herbie answer your question there real quick. All and... right, good. They need to test to make sure I'm coming through now. I was actually ready for us to get started and everything, mm. but my mic was off. Okay, right, start. Take Braille care of screen. Raheel, and then we'll do eye toys. Yes. So, um, work and then play. I guess I can see how it works now. Okay, Raheel, mm -hmm. let's start with Braille screen input. That's the easiest one to talk about. Um, it is now a... C double touch uh, double tapping a ch to uh, start braille screen input while you're in a text field and i'll talk more about uh, braille screen input on the next iba cafe but okay, it's worth when? And this when is saturday well the saturday is the apple workshop i don't think yeah, he was asking you're going to talk about BSI. more about braille screen input yeah well yeah i thought he asked about how to enable braille screen input Oh, well, yeah, I know, but you said you'll talk about it next. I was giving you an opportunity to plug when the next Apple Workshop. Saturday. Well, workshop. well the Apple Workshop, I'll be talking about iOS 18. Oh, you're talking about another future. Okay. Yes. So yeah. what's the next cafe that you'll be talking about that? Bro, so the next, the cafe next, um, not next Sunday, uh, next month is when I'll to go in depth more on Braille screen input, but it's worth looking at the settings if you go to voiceover and um, Braille screen input, because there's a lot of cool things there. Yeah. Now, um, but the CH cord will um, start the Braille screen input, uh, not CH cord, double tapping CH, and then... Um, the C8, which is dots one six for those of you that don't know grade two braille. I'm sorry, I forget that people don't know that. Um, and then. But which phone should he get, Herbie? That's yes, what he that's what I'm going to get to next. Which phone? I recommend the Pro for two reasons. One, it does have more cameras and it has lidar, and um, two, it's going to have a better battery life than the F iPhone 16 itself. Mm -hmm. And, and also, Pro, and and the Pro Max will give you more screen real estate for Braille screen input. Yes, it will. Okay. Also, follow up to that. Um, okay, real quick, the, Raheel. To the, because I have a e reader from the, from the library. So if I get a new phone and I want to either set it up as new or transfer from my old settings, would it automatically remember to connect to my e reader, or do I have to? Do the one 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 code all over again to connect my. Probably have to do the one 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 code all over again because it's a different device. Okay. Because I don't want to like have any issues where I have to hard reset by going to settings and. Yeah, well, you probably just have to pair it with a new device. I doubt you'll have to hard reset the e-reader. So it'll work okay. this time, eighteenth. Okay. Okay, it should. All righty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's go along with our iToys Boys. segment. Herbie, let me see. Hang on. We going? Yes, to, uh... indeed. All right. Hang on. Okay, now you can unmute Herbie. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to iToys for uh, September. Wow, this is the last... Monday in September, the fourth Monday in September. That's just crazy enough. And it's 2024. I thought it was just January yesterday. And uh, we're already to iOS 18 and a new version of AirPods. And here to tell you about the AirPods 4 out of the um, several lineups of AirPods that we have now, including um, the most disappointing of all, the AirPods Max, which their new claim to fame is USB C charging which I think is great if you have an iPhone 15 and higher and you just want one cord, but otherwise, yeah. But uh, we're going to talk about the AirPods 4 instead, and here is the man who just got them the other day, Brad. Or should we call you Bradford, as Pete did? I, I don't know how well, formal we need to be. But uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> AirPods 4. The latest in the latest addition to the AirPods lineup, I should say. AirPods 4. Um, I think I read an article. It said, what did it say? Pro features add a 
non-pro price, which I'm not so sure about that, but I read a bunch of articles on this. So AirPods 4 is the fourth iteration of the regular AirPods, not to be confused with AirPods Pro or AirPods Max, which AirPods Max shouldn't even be called AirPods because they're headphones. But uh, anyhow, the AirPods 4 is built upon the AirPods 3 and includes a lot of features, a lot of pro features that are found in the AirPods Pro uh, and Pro 2, actually. So let's talk about them a little bit. Um, I read a bunch of articles, and they all had a lot of numbers and specifications, and it makes your head hurt. So this is the layman's version of all that. The AirPods um, 3 and the AirPods 4 are very, very similar. AirPods 3 introduced the shorter stem than we had in AirPods 1 and 2. They were very similar to the short stem in the AirPods Pro. And a matter of fact, they're very similar to AirPods 4, except they do not have the silicone tip. They have a... Um, the part that goes in here is very similar to what was on the AirPods 1 and 2, um, but it was a little a little larger, and it had the short stem. Um, and instead of tapping on the AirPods like you did with 1 and 2, you squeeze the stem to do things like play pause, move to the next track, move backwards a track, answer a call, so on and so forth. Um, so... All that is true with the AirPods. AirPods 4 or are a new generation of the AirPods 3. We might even call them AirPods 3B. Um, they are, the articles I read say, they're, they're very similar. They actually say, so, some articles said they're identical. Other article I read that, that cranked out all these numbers that made my head spin said they're actually slightly smaller. And that may be true. When I put them in my ear, at least the left ear didn't feel it fit as snug as my AirPods 3. Uh, but it said they're overall, they're just slightly smaller. They weigh a little less. I found that when I touch them, the stem feels a little bit larger, like slightly larger diameter. Um, but other than that, they are pretty much the same. The case is the same height, the same width, but it's slightly narrower. And when I open it and feel it, I can tell they, it, the AirPods are just in there. They're slightly closer together. There's a little less uh dead space on the outer edges. So they just tightened it up a little bit. When you put them, the cases right next to each other, you could tell it's maybe, I don't know, not even, maybe not even a quarter of an inch and narrower, but it's very similar. It feels narrower in your hand. The specs say it's a little lighter. It compared um, the AirPods 4 with the AirPods 3. Now, what I haven't mentioned is there's two versions of the AirPods 4. There's regular AirPods 4, and there's AirPods 4 with active noise canceling. Now, this is something that's very interesting. Noise canceling has been available in the AirPods Pro since they were first introduced in 2019, and then they were improved upon, I think it was two years ago when the AirPods Pro 2 came out. So, um, the... Um, and the design of the three was built upon the, the, the AirPods Pro 2. So you had noise canceling in them, but you had the silicon tips that sealed your ear. So when they first announced that the AirPods 4 would have uh, two versions and the higher version would have what they call ANC, active noise cancellation, you wonder, well, how are they going to do that with uh, out, you know, a silicon tip to seal your ear, ear canal? And the thing is, it's amazing. It it works fantastic. Um, I've had them in around the house. I have not, you know, gone out and about. It's it's got another feature I'll talk about that that ha active noise can't that that listens to the sounds around you and adjust the level of noise canceling uh, according to the sounds around you. Now, you know. Um, 
So I haven't had really had a chance to do that. Now, that's a feature that also is new to the AirPods Pro 2. That was introduced actually a few months ago. Um, I didn't even realize that till I was doing my research on this one, that it's been in my AirPods Pro 2 since, I don't know, July, right after WWDC. But it was introduced. It's, it's included in the AirPods Pro. So you have three levels of noise cancellation of it's, um, you have four instead of three. There is, of course, off. There is transparency mode, which the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max both have had for a while. There's full-on noise cancellation. And the middle one is called, oh, God, it's not ANC. What's it called? It is, I have my notes here. It is adaptive noise canceling. That's what the A is there for, A-N-C, adaptive noise canceling. And you control these just like on the AirPods Pro with a little squeeze and hold of the stem. And it makes a little sound, and it has uh, distinctive sounds for each of them. I have um, no noise canceling turned off on both my AirPods Pro and my AirPods 4, and I tend to go with transparency mode. I'm now using this adaptive noise canceling and the um, full-on noise canceling when I'm when I want to listen to something and there's just noises going on uh, around the house and I just want to listen to music or podcast or whatever and not be disturbed by that. So it works the very same and it's amazing that it does it without the, um, the, the, the silicon tip. Now, the other thing that I discovered is in the articles I was reading, it talks about the improved sound. Oh, I didn't mention both the air, the air, big improvement of the AirPods 4 over the AirPods 3 is the H2 processor chip that's in these things. That was introduced with the AirPods Pro 2 uh, that came out two years ago. The AirPods Pro went from H1 to H2. Well, they put it now in the regular AirPods, and um, that that enabled a lot of this um, advanced noise canceling that was in the AirPods Pro 2 that's now in the AirPods Pro 4. But it also makes music and other things sound much more enhanced. Now, what I read in the articles I read, it talked about that the AirPods Pro 4 have advanced venting and some, um, what was the other one? I can't remember. But anyway, you know, sound is air moving. And so if the AirPod is completely sealed, air doesn't really move as well. Well, they have advanced air venting in the AirPods Pro, I mean, the AirPods 4 in both versions, the regular and the um, adaptive noise canceling ANC version. And let me tell you, uh, I thought the sound was amazing. I thought the sound, and I, I tested this. I listened to a song on AirPods 4. I'd listened to a song on AirPods Pro 2. And it was amazing. Much richer bass, much richer sounds. I'm not even going to compare it to the AirPods 3. The AirPods 3 are very tinny sounding, and bass is just not really a, if you want bass you don't you know the airpods 3 doesn't have it the bass was amazing and i you know i could cite several songs that really struck me the the drum intro on 50 ways to leave your lover um the clarity i listened to um beatles yesterday the sound of mccartney's guitar and the the string quartet in the background. It was like I'd, I'd never heard it before. Now, I realize a lot of these songs have been remastered. You know, you find them in Apple Music. So, of course, they're going to sound really good. But I compared them. I listened to them both on the AirPods Pro 2 as well as the AirPods 4, and it was unbelievable. Um, you have to hear it for yourself to appreciate it. Um, there are some new features in the AirPods uh, 4 that are also pro features. Among them are, hang on, my notes. Of course, you know, you can control noise control. Of course, you can determine just like on the AirPods Pro, when you squeeze the stem, does it do control noise control or does it do Siri? And you can have one AirPod do one and the other AirPod do the other. Um, you can also use, um, 
you know, hey, Iris, uh, like we were talking about, um, you can turn that on just like you can do on the other AirPods and you can, um, you know, control um, Iris through your phone um, without having to touch the AirPod or touch your phone. You can, um, the one thing I wanted to talk about was um, call control. Okay, you, pr you there's pressing control, hang on. The, the new one is Head gestures, thank you, Doug. You think I remember that? Well, you the new feature is included. You can nod your head up and up and down to answer a call or respond to a text message alert, or shake your head left and right to um, respond. You know, no negatively to that. Um, I couldn't get it to work. There is a one thing in your the app uh, when you go into iPhone and go to the device and flick down for more info. There is a way to test this. And, you know, it asks you to try it, and you, you tap on it, and it says, shake your head up, you know, nod up and down. And you do it gently, and it responds and lets you know that it hears, okay, it does a little sound. And then it has you shake your head left or right. And it works just, you know, you, you think, oh, that works great. Let me try it in real life. And um, I get a phone call. And no matter what I do, I'm shaking my head up and down. I'm shaking it left and right, and I can't get it to work. I tried it. First, I thought it was because my iPhone uh, that's was That's a real unlocked. head shaker. Say it again? That's a real head shaker. Yeah, it is a, it's a, uh, yeah, a head shaker as well as a head um, scratcher. So we're, we've got 15 minutes left of the call. Just one other thing I want to mention as it relates to iOS 18 and AirPods is – some another new behavior you'll notice in general is now Siri will ask you when you get longer messages if you want her to read it or not. So I think that's kind of cool. But um, the AirPods 4 sound cool, and uh, you were telling me, yeah, you think they sound better than the AirPods Pro 2. Right. And the conversation awareness is interesting. Um, you can start talking, and it will automatically lower the sound of the music while when it detects someone's talking to you or when you start talking. And it will stay down and, as long as you're talking, and then when you're finished, it waits a second, and then it goes back up. Now, what I see the problem with that is the, the music keeps playing, and that's fine if it's music, but what if you listen to a podcast? Yeah. It means it, it's like audio ducking, and it lowers it way down, and it keeps going, and you're you're missing it. So yep. um, you may find that reaching up and – Squeezing the stem once real quick to pause whatever you're listening to works better. Um, there's another one where you can adjust the uh, adaptive noise canceling, um, lower, higher. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of us depend on our hearing. And I'm not going to be wearing AirPods when I'm out walking around when there's a lot of traffic noises around. I tend to want to no. hear what's going on around me. Um, right. That's the highlights of this thing. So I don't, uh, the price, the two versions, the um, the the model with 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 without A and C is um, one hundred twenty nine dollars, and with A and C is one hundred seventy nine. Now I've already seen articles today. It said Amazon has the A and C version on for one hundred sixty nine dollars. Um, but um, you're also, I'm sure, well aware that AirPods Pro 2 are always on sale. And I think I saw something today that said they were down to $189. So which one do you pick? I think that's up to you. A lot of people don't like the fit of the um, AirPods that don't have the silicone tip, and a lot of people say they don't like the silicone tip because it just doesn't feel right in their canal. So now there is a, a you know, more options for you to choose from. And again, like you know, it's always been an individual kind of choice. So now there's more individual choices. So why don't we open it up and take some questions? Because I should be able to unmute. This is Jake. I got a question. Okay, Jake, go ahead. Does the AirPods, the new ones, do they have a pro version with the cute with the silicone? Because I like the silicone. I have the AirPods Pro too. No, that would be AirPods Pro. If you want silicone tip, that is an AirPods Pro feature. Oh, okay. This is this is AirPods Four, which is um, built upon the. You know, it's very similar in style to the AirPods Three. It's just got the H two chip. 
And like I said, that venting makes the music sound unbelievable. This yeah, is so, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jake. Did you do you find these AirPods to be comfortable than the ones? Like, if so, if I bought a pair, do you think I'd like them? You know, that's an individual thing. I've had regular AirPods. I've had all the Air, at one point or another. I've had a lot of the models, all of them actually. Uh, I've had the AirPods three since they came out. I had to look it up today. They came out three years ago in October of two thousand twenty-one. Uh, I didn't realize they'd been out that long. Um, I use, ear, you know, different AirPods for different things. I tend to use – the thing I liked about the AirPods 3 is I wear them around the house. I, I use them when I'm using my computer um, primarily so that, you know, I can hear the screen reader really well and the rest of the world doesn't have to. But it also enables me to hear what's going on around me. So I think the transparency mode would make that um, – very helpful, but when there's noises in the house, uh, people downstairs talking, and I'm up here in a loft over the living room, uh, I want, I'd like to I'd sometimes take out AirPods Pro or my AirPods Mac because I want the noise canceling. Well, these have that built in if you get the ANC model. If you get the entry level, the 129 one, you do not get that, and it's just an improved version of the AirPods 3. Now, it's up to you. You know, one person likes the way one AirPod fits and another person likes the way the pros fit. So it's up to you. Okay. This Maria. Hang on. We had Pete said it. Yeah. Uh, does it pick up spatial audio or is that, does that yes, depend on the, that's, that's, a oh, H, okay. that's a H2 feature. H2 thing. Yes, just like it the will AirPods do that. Pro Just like two. the pros to so, do that. And yep. The, this go is ahead, be, even the AirPods 3 will handle spatial audio. So. Yes. Okay. All right. And that's a H1. So I guess that's a. Yeah, because cool. the AirPods Max also does spatial audio. Yeah, and that's H1 as well. You're right. Cool. Yep. Thank no, you. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So, AirPods 3 and the original AirPods Pro even will do spatial audio so, as well. This is Paul. Okay. Okay. One thing I heard, Paul. I, I can't remember who all I heard. Did I hear Marie? Did I hear Paul? For, you know, Liz, Paul? Marie. This Marie, I had real quick for Jay. Okay, real quick. We'll go, to, we'll go to Paul. We'll go to Marie. Then I think it was Liz and then Paul. There is there is a new AirPods Pro three, isn't there? Also, no, there is not. What they announced, no, not, not what they announced Pro. was all okay. software, and okay. that's some of the features that are in this AirPods four, but not all. That okay. you know, I, I believe if I'm not, I know that um, hearing aid certification thing is software, and that's AirPods two. The Apple was kind of confusing when they did that. They made it sound like there was an AirPods Pro three, but there is not. All that is software coming to the AirPods Pro 2. Okay, Liz? Did I hear Liz? How, yeah. How long was the is the battery charge? Or it, says, charge for? it says there's one length for when you're using ANC and one length for when you're not, or was that one length for the model that doesn't have ANC? And one, but basically, uh, four hours versus uh, six hours. And then there was the case combined with the case. I believe it was 30 hours without ANC, ANC and 20 hours with, which means, you know, you're using them. You can take one out, stick it in the case and go one AirPod then switch them back. I, you know, it's all very confusing when they do those, but <laughs> um, you know, ANC going to take eat battery power. So uh -huh. Depends on which level you. Of course, if I've got the ANC version, I'm always using some form of noise canceling, transparency, adaptive, um, you know, full on, no no noise, you know, full full noise canceling, something. But okay, okay, uh, Paul, let's go. Hang on, let's go, Paul. He's been patiently yeah, waiting. Yeah, um, real quick, the uh, I got a set of the uh, two pro, and they're at Costco for. The one ninety nine, but that includes right. two years of uh, Apple Care, right? And it, is there any idea when the other software is coming out for the hearing aid uh, support? No. I don't know. I did read an article since the announcement um, during the Apple event on what was that April? Uh, I mean September ninth. The FDA has approved it, so um, uh, hopefully, one would imagine Apple would have that out coming up, maybe October, some you know soon. Who knows soon, as soon as they can implement the update. Okay, thanks. And then um, let's go with, I'm sorry, um, Pat. Pat, thank you. Okay, so the 
original ones I didn't like because I have small ears and they which, fell out which, all which the time. Which original ones? The ones or something, I don't know. The, the very first AirPods. Yes, the AirPod 1, and then there was the AirPod 2 that was the same design, and then the and 3 the is pros, different. The Pros had the silicone on them. Silicone tip, and, there's, and their Pro, Pro and Pro 2 were identical in yeah. size. The only difference is the H2 chip in the Pro 2 and software differences. So the the new one you're talking about doesn't have a tip. It doesn't have a silicone tip. It is similar to the AirPods 1 and 2, but it's larger. It's a little larger. The part that goes in your ear is a little larger. Like thicker, um, you mean? It's bigger round. Yeah, thicker as it goes. It's similar to the Pro, but it doesn't have a silicone tip. Oh, it has God. a little, you know, larger version of what the 1 and 2 had. They've been out, and the, the AirPods 3 have had it. It's 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 essentially just like the I have held them right next to each other. I can't tell the difference. I do notice that the stem is slightly fatter. It's slightly bigger diameter. I can tell them apart by touching the stem. Okay. But other than that, they're, it's, they're, they're very, the specs say they're slightly smaller than the three. But it's minuscule. Thank Anybody you. Anybody else? Okay. Well. Cynthia, I have a question. Okay, Cynthia. Um, it might seem silly, but um, what There's is no audio? Silly questions. <laughs> What's audio spatial when you're talking spatial about spatial audio? Means that when you're listening to something, now it has to be enabled, and it it it, it it's a it's software dependent on the device you're using to listen, like the AirPods Pro or the AirPods um, 3 or 4. And if you're listening to something, say, on your iOS device, your iPhone or Mac will do it too, uh, but it depends on, 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 on what you're listening to. Um, but if you or hold your iPhone in front of you or set it on the table, and if you turn your head away, the sound will shift to where the iPhone is. Okay, and if you get up and walk around, the sound will appear, will sound to you as if it's coming from where that iPhone is sitting on the table. The if you get in your chair and, and slowly turn around, it will sound like you will hear that go from center to right to sound like it's behind you to your left and then back in front of you. It simulates simulates the, around the sound somewhere. source of the sound is staying put and you are moving the other purpose of spatial audio is for surround sound so you'll see it enabled Correct. on the most video platforms um so it's really great to hear like it, you know so it's you can hear a movie and have the action like something like it's all around you also one of the perks of apple music compared to the others is that there are a lot of tracks that are encoded in the spatial audio format you do have to enable it in the music and settings but uh, it sounds really awesome having the music all around you and you know i would say that if for no other reason get the airpods uh, for that but um well the airpods so four have it as well this is yep. Pete with a variation on that. Doesn't it get also give you the directional sound? Like if you're if somebody shoots a gun, like when you're watching yes. a movie, somebody shoots a gun from in front of you on the right, it it sounds like it's coming from that specific yeah. direction. It's like Kirby so this, said, it's it's like surround sound. Surround sound, yeah, but yes. not Built not into, from all genera yeah, but from individual directions as well. But again, but, it's dependent upon. The source. You know, you're using the AirPods 4 and what you're listening to it on. Obviously, right. your iPhone will do yep. it. For instance, App there Apple is devices, no spatial yeah. audio support for YouTube. No, because yeah, YouTube doesn't, doesn't, yeah. Nor YouTube Music, if you subscribe nope. to that. No, correct. YouTube that's why I said Apple Music. That's the perk of Apple Music specifically. Right. That, um... Thank you. And that's what I was listening to when I was testing to see how music sounded on it. I was listening to various stuff i just 
thought of, oh, you know, actually what I'll find is I'll tell Apple Music to play a song and then just it just starts coming up with other stuff after it. And I just let, you know, random stuff. So I just started letting Apple Music play stuff on my iPhone. And um, it that's when I heard it, you know, play yesterday. It played uh, whatever else I mentioned, um, Paul Simon, and just all this stuff. It was amazing. A lot of that stuff's been, you know, remixed, but it's it sounds great on AirPods. So if anyone has another question real quick, if not, we are pretty much at the top of the hour. I got 2,100. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, remind everyone um, that uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow we have the iBug mini buzz at 5 o'clock p.m. from 5 to 6. We're right back here in the same ah. Zoom hour. Zoom room. It's a one hour where we do pretty much what we did in here during the first hour, do Q&A on iOS um, later on tomorrow night at 7. Uh, we have Mac and Talk where Chanel will host a talk, you know, Q&A about the Mac, everything about the Mac, but no iOS in that one. Thursday night, we'll have iBugs Life. George is going to show us about, talk to us about making pizza at home. Friday night is the iBug Friday Night Audio Described Movie, and we're going to be watching Groundhog Day. And where is it? Pennsylvania. So at uh, get started at 7.15 with the uh, pre-movie social time. Uh, name that tune. Our girl Bargle will get a joke or two in there. And then the movie starts at 8, followed by... Q and A discussion after I mean just movie discussion about after the movie, and of course trivia. Saturday we have the i iBug Apple workshop where we're going to hear all about iOS 18, and then Monday we're right back here again for another edition of the iBug Buzz. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording.